Let's talk to CJ in California. They want to talk about micro versus macro evolution. CJ, welcome Hello. to the show. Hi. Hello. So what can we help you with today? I just want to uh, already have some ways to explain to people the differences between micro and macro evolution and how they're basically the same thing. But I just want to hear some things from you guys of how you would maybe talk to a, uh, a creationist about that. Yeah. Well, you called the right, the right week advice to take it away. Well in general, yeah, they pretty much are the same thing. It's just that one is at the species level or above and the other is underneath the species level. Um, but there are, if, if you get into the technical literature on the subject, there are some differences. Like there, um, there are some instances in our evolutionary history that we're not entirely sure how they happened quite as fast as they did. Um, and this, this is something that creationists will like to jump on and say like, oh, well, you see, you can't figure that one out. Therefore, you know, it's micro and macro aren't just the same thing. That's magic. You believe in magic just like we do, or, well, they won't say just like we do with the magic thing. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's where, um, so all, all the mechanisms are basically the same, but there is a debate as to whether or not there are more mechanisms that can cause macro evolution to happen faster than we have observed it thus far. And those would be things like, um, I forget the technical word for it, but there there is a uh, a process by which an organism can actually um, absorb another organism's genome into its genome, and essentially, like it becomes a fusion of itself and whatever it just absorbed, and that can account for some of these pretty big changes that we see in the past. Now, obviously, the like with stuff like that, we're talking about very small organisms. A human is not going to suddenly absorb the genome of a mouse. Um, like this, this would be like organisms that are capable of doing horizontal gene transfer um, for the oh, most yeah. part. But I heard about that, like uh, with um, mitochondria, right? I'm yeah. Sure. So mito are, are uh, the existence of eukaryotes, or, or, well, is it eukaryotes that have mitochondria? Okay. Whatever. The, the organisms with mitochondria in their cell, mitochondria is actually a separate organism. That's not quite the same thing because mitochondria have their own DNA. And it's separate from your uh, from the cell's DNA, um, but it is similar. Where mitochondria used to be a different organism, and we just kind of absorbed them and formed a symbiotic relationship with them. Okay, cool, cool. Um, unfortunately, I think we dropped CJ. Um, I think he must oh, no. have hit hit the hit the wrong button on his end. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially the 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 through line is time, right? If, if, if we, if we make small changes, we're not going to see it until we see it. <laughs> and then when we see it, we're like, oh, that seems like a big change. But if you look closer, it's just been the accumulation of a lot of smaller changes over time. Yeah. But there, but there are a couple mechanisms that only operate on the macro evolutionary scale, but the, like for the most part, it is all micro evolution that just eventually it just adds up and suddenly it's and even like the definition of the word species is not pinned down it's it's, oh, yeah, a, it's like this. every I'll every paper yeah <laughs> every paper that deals with speciation events has to define what they even mean by species because species is a hard thing to define specifically because evolution happens organisms mm -hmm. don't fit into these neat little categories that we like to put them in so we need to figure out what are we talking about when we say species and how do we know that it has crossed the line of species? So there are different definitions that can be used and we've seen speciation events happen with any definition you care to apply. Mm -hmm. Unlike the biblical definition of the word kind, which creationists like to bring up and be like, oh, well, see, kind is uh, kind is a vaguely defined too, just like species. And they'll try to equivocate the two. It's right. like, Kind is poorly defined because you guys need to shift the goalposts because species is poorly defined. So you can't just plunk it down there. Right. Like, like heard... species is, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking this in a, in, a, in a different direction. So yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there's this one YouTube video that I watched where someone was like, uh, Cardassians and Bajorans are the same species because they can interbreed and was like talking about how like, 
it was interspecies warfare and it was a result of those ancient Bajorans on their their airships going and crash landing in Cardassia. It was interesting to me and just a fun. I, I think Star Trek ignores the species barrier. I feel like that's <laughs> in a lot of places. I enjoy watching though, like these these like super Star Trek nerds, like beyond what I could ever aspire to be, try and figure out like how speciesization works in Star Trek. It's like mm -mm, just give up. It's not gonna happen. 